Hey gang, it's Tim. So today I want to talk about decentralized decisioning. And what do I mean by that? I mean that as an agency leader, you give yourself a break. You allow yourself to let other people carry the load. So how do you do that? Well, it really comes down to you being able to articulate the outcome of what you want. So let's just imagine that you are working on a client that's whatever. They're, they're, you're working with a client who's a fashion retailer. And they sell sporty clothes, but not athletic wear. And you are trying to create an advertising campaign that talks about the sportiness, the great look, the versatility, the, you know, the comfort, the easy to wear, but the clothes that you were selling are not designed for real athletics, right? That's at the leisure, right? So imagine you're doing, I don't know, you're doing SEM marketing, you're doing, you're doing Google AdWords. Now in keyword research, you might come out with the idea that, you know, that running pants for women is a great keyword term for you. And so if you just tell your team to go generate keywords that are relevant to this site that they see without really defining what the client is trying to accomplish, your team might actually think like, oh yeah, running pants for women is a great term. It's, it's got high intent, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, we, we can rank for it or we can advertise against it. And I think that this is a good term. But that's not what the client is after. What they're looking for are clothing for women and men or whomever. They're looking for clothing that feels sporty, but is really comfortable. Things you're not going to go running in. So running pants for women would be a terrible term to advertise against or to optimize for from a search engine perspective. So you might want to clue your team in to let them know that, you know, we're not going after sporting terms. We're going after terms that are about comfort and style. And so that can help them shape. So that's using comfort and style helps them understand the goal that you have set up with the clients so they can work their magic better. Now, how does that reduce the number of decisions that you make? Well, it's really pretty simple. If you are good enough at setting up the outcome, it's pretty easy for your team to say, oh, hey, is my output, does my output match the definition that we have? Or if you've got a workflow set up, does my output provide enough value for the next person in the workflow so that they can continue this work and make it fantastic? So. Is it connected to the goal and is it appropriate to hand off to the next person? And so if you can set up your team this way so that they know what the big goal is and they know what other people on the team expect from them, then you have to do a lot less checking. You have to do a lot less management. What you are able to do is now say, hey, Keyword research people, tell me how your keywords relate to the goal of comfort and style and tell me that how they are appropriate for the copywriter who's going to write the ad. Simple. Like you have now put the responsibility of checking and proof onto your team because they really understand the the desired outcome of the project, the big goal, comfort and style close, and the desired outcome for the next person in the workflow. So that requires more responsibility and ownership on the part of the team. And you might be concerned that your team is not ready for that. But what I can tell you is that giving them ownership and autonomy creates the desire for success because they don't want to do a bunch of work and have you say like, oh, that's no good. So if you're saying, 
here's the outcome that I want. Here's that, that I want and that the client wants. And here's the outcome that the next person, the workflow expects. Manage your work like a grown up so that those two conditions are met. And that really empowers your team to make decisions on their own because they know what the parameters are. They know what they're being judged on and they know what the expectations are. And so if they cannot manage to those clear expectations that you've sent out, or they cannot produce in accordance with the expectations of your client, sorry, of the next person in the workflow, well, then there's a problem with that person. You know, they don't understand you know, either the, the big goal or the, the workflow goal, but you are empowering them to say, yeah, I can do that. Or do I understand this well enough to go invest hours of work into this before I get some clarification? So what this does is it puts the onus for quality assurance, for relevance, for ease of use and delivery onto your team rather than them giving you stuff that you need to assemble. And if you are able to make the expectation of the company and client goal clear and the expectation of the workflow output clear, you have just said to your team, well, oh, I know you can do this. I know that you have the skills and resources to be able to accomplish this task. Go ahead. And if they don't have the skills or if they don't have the resources, they're going to let you know because nobody wants to say, hey, this is the thing that I've delivered or this is the thing that I've handed off to you. And to have that person say, eh, eh, that's not right. And so clarity around mission, expectation, goal, and clarity around cooperation with team allows you to focus on the bigger parts of the business while your team executes the places where they have the true expertise.